we've really talked about um, what a legal engineer is and now we're getting into how to become one and the roadmap and so I'm gonna explain the roadmap you should follow and if you're looking for a job or in the event that you're new, new, uh, you're a prospective uni student, and you're sort of in that limbo stage between um, picking either computer science or um, law degree, and you really want to end up as a legal engineer. And so I also use my my own situation as a case study because I'm also in a bit of a limbo. When you're working in a law firm as a candidate attorney, which is basically a lawyer in training, and you want to transition into a full-time job as a legal engineer. So you can still be in my position and still you know, work for a law firm as a legal assistant, law clerk, before you write your bar exam, and also code on the side. You're still a legal engineer. That's essentially what it is. You're a lawyer who's involved in the tech space as well, which can be in the blockchain space, you know, JavaScript, Python. It's just a combination of being right in the middle between law and tech. So there's that route. And then there's the law tech route where you're applying to these new hot law tech companies which are being funded left, right and center. They're being really um, funded heavily. So there's that option, which is the one I want. But I've been applying for some jobs um, recently, haven't been successful. I've applied to five really big, um, big companies. And I just wanted to talk to you uh, about my experience and some of the things I've been asked in interviews and what they're really looking for. So most importantly, um, they really care about your firm. They all say a firm legal education and experience is a prerequisite. It's necessary yet not sufficient. So essentially, if you have a law degree, you need the experience as well. So you need the law degree and the experience, right? That's your firm foundation. That's before um, whatever tech uh, coding experience you have. You must have a legal background and legal experience as a prerequisite. How you get your coding or tech experience is another story. They don't care how you get it, whether you get it from a boot camp, reading books, um, you know, your nephew, your, um, your brother-in-law, whoever teaches you, doesn't matter. Because the thing with that is you can always um, prove your experience. They, they can give you coding tests. You can always prove your experience in that manner. But with law, you need that legal education to just prove that you have gone through, you know, the four years of law school and things like that. So it's it's that you've done your law degree, you have the experience now working as a law clerk, legal assistant, and you've gotten that experience. Next thing that you would need is sales experience. They all require the same sales thing. Do you have experience in sales? So in some sense, you can say if you can link it towards billing um, in a law firm, but practically they want experience with uh, sales and SaaS. So selling software as a service, essentially what it is. So having some experience selling software, right? Because they're all growing startups and they want to increase their bottom line, which is why they're looking for someone with sales experience. Um, you also need several years of programming experience in web development. This is literally what they mostly say. Besides your legal qualification, you need to have several years of programming experience and web development. Now, that may not won't be your day-to-day -day job. Your day-to-day -day job won't be necessarily just coding and... Um, getting a viable product to the market. It will essentially be um, using the already developed uh, product or contributing towards it and um, putting in some tweaks after uh, consulting with clients and assisting clients with their technical needs. That's what they need the experience for. You also need uh, document analysis and automation experience. So things like Kira, um, luminescence i cannot say it for the life of me i cannot say it i think you know what it is it's basically a document analysis software a seal contract express things like that um document management software is also a really good one um what else would they need um yeah, um, the, basically there was like a huge long paragraph about whether you have a, you know, however you get your um, your coding experience really doesn't matter to them. Um, creating solutions for their customers. You have to be in a situation where you have to identify the selling points to your customers, how you can improve their situation, uh, solve their problem, creating software or using tech to solve their problem. Essentially, you will be the person who is recommending to the company. It's not just a bottom line, you know, top to bottom, where they tell you this is how you solve this situation because every client has different needs. So they're never going to be like, hey, um, here's what you should be selling to clients. No, you should be identifying what the client needs and then matching that to um, a certain solution. You also need customer service experience. Um, that's a big one that's required. In terms of your firm legal background, um, 
you need an LLM or being an admitted attorney. Those are the, uh, the, the big ones, plus experience in a big law firm. Um, usually, that's usually the entry. If you don't have that, it's rare that they'll call you up. I mean, I've, I've seen some interviews of some people who've just gone straight from law school and got into these law tech companies. Um, but obviously, they came from like big unis and things like that. So experience with software development, we've talked about that. Um, customer experience, customer service and sales. That's pretty much it, guys. Um, as you follow this journey, I'll always keep updating you on how far I get in these interviews and if I actually end up getting into one of these law tech companies. So thanks, guys.